I'm directing your play, Animals Out of Paper, which is a joy to work on, I must say. Tell me why you folded those ravens. They weren't ravens. They were blackbirds or crows. I don't know, it didn't mean anything. It's just something different than all those stupid little paper doves. When working, reading the play, it was very interesting that origami is a starting point for the uh, relationship of these three characters. And I just wanted to ask, really, I suppose you get asked a lot, where did the idea for origami come from? It's really fascinating because I don't fold origami myself. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the art form, or at least I wasn't. And I was on a bus going from Cleveland to New York one evening, and um, I was sitting next to a, a lady that was uh, folding origami next to me. And I, so I started talking to her about it, and she said that she actually teaches origami to children. And she was telling me that you know all children take to origami very quickly. They like doing it. It's fun. It's also helpful in schools. They use it in math classes, geometry, etc. But it's also artistic. And she said to me an interesting thing. She said that every so often she'll find a child who sees folds before they happen, which ended up being a line in the play. And um, I thought that was fascinating. And she said that some children, very few, but the, the odd child can find this, uh, can look at a square piece of paper and, and immediately kind of intuitively know how to fold it to make a certain shape. And uh, I was taken with that and started thinking about orga origami in a different way. And as, as I started thinking about it and thinking about a play, I came across the very vibrant subculture of folders in the US and in the world. And as I did that, the play started to unfold, so to speak. The characters in the play are very strong. When you thought of origami, had you already got an idea of who you wanted to write about, or did they just come purely from that spark? The, the starting point for me was I went to the National Origami Conference in New York City. About a thousand origami folders gathered there every summer. And um, you know, of all ages, of all you know, races, of all you know, both genders, there's no real origami type. You know, and um, I saw some beautiful stuff and really learned a great deal about it. And from that, I started to really see the character of Ilana, yeah. of Andy, and Suresh was one of those three teenagers who I decided to keep. And, and then when I had these three characters, putting them together, all of a sudden, like, the pot started to boil. So, Frodog said you were like a professional origami person? Suresh is a very interesting character because of his background, his cultural background, but also trying to be this street kid, wise kid, uh, New Yorker. Um, and that can be for any background, but that development is very interesting too, that, that his, his journey is quite huge, I think. Well, I think it's, it's it, it, to me it fit and it, it makes sense. And I also, like, on a very like realistic level, like I know kids like this. It's always interesting to take very like oppositional or contradictory things for a character and put them together. And that's what we have with Suresh. And, and we have, you know, the, the metaphor in the play is the, the many folds, you know, the, the, the complicated, um, you know, crease pattern that might make up an individual. And with, and with Suresh, you have somebody that's very complicated because you have a kid that's already gone through a lot of, um, you know, tragedy in his life and who's trying to be somebody else, but has these capabilities to be somebody very great and do great things. And so, for especially for a 17-year-old, or an 18 year old, that to have all that stuff going on, you know, makes it even more complicated and more interesting. Oh, wow, that is a big bird. Yeah. Hey, yeah, there's wow. a lot of paper. I, I, I've got paper like everywhere. Don't get my paper wet. Oh. Just stay right there. Don't move. I'm right here. I'm not going to move. Andy as well is particular favourite because of his, I suppose, dorky character, and he's very funny, but he's also very sweet. Um, did he come from anywhere in particular, or was he a composite? Well, you know, he started out in that very kind of stereotypical way of like a math teacher who's just a, he's a he's a good guy and he you know he's he's looking out for the best. But he grew a lot, and I you know Andy ends up being you know at least in, in my experiences and seeing productions of this play elsewhere in the States, he's the fan favorite. And you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, this is a guy, you know, he's a good guy, he's a guy who counts his blessings. And um, as you can see in the play, that, that I ended up taking that note to myself very literally. You better relax. Just get out of here. And Alana, of course, is the opposite. Mm -hmm. She's sort of the black and the white. He's very yeah. positive and optimistic, even though he's had a terrible time. And she is completely the opposite. Yeah. She's cutting and ironic and... Uh, She's a great character too. She's a different sort of character and they're actually oil and water. You know, like he is, he's so all, you know, earnest and embracing and yeah. she's like, 
get away from me and you know and but but she's also had her share of 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 hard times as the play has started and you know I think it's you know when when I look at the way the play is structured the first half it starts off with her isolated in her apartment and those first four scenes we see these these two men kind of like like crash through her world crash through her door literally and start bugging her you know, like her, her, her general feeling in the beginning is like, why are you guys here? Like, I don't want you here. Yeah. But, you know, she's eventually drawn to them. Yeah. And, um, and it's, you know, it, 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 it's, it's kind of what everyone puts up with, you know, in terms of um, when, when people kind of barge into your life and uh, you, you may not want them there at first, but they, they end up affecting you and changing you. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's kind of what the play is, is, is dealing with. Well, thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.